if you guys are in technical sales and you are pitching services or products, then on this video, I'm going to go through the tactics of how you can increase your likelihood to move people along in the process and actually increase your close rate on your pitches. I had to switch up the flow, show you the way that it go. God is good, but his life is hard. But it gets better when you grind it small. I'm just really trying to leave a mark. We tired of being who they say we are. That's the baton, we gon' take a fall. I was the real, we don't fake it all. Tired of nine to five. Just make enough to survive. Only living on the weekends. You really thinking that's why I'm alive? So let's talk about presentations, pitches, everything in between. What is the purpose of giving a pitch? You guys are like, dude, I already know what the purpose is. I'm trying to sell something. But where I see a lot of people making the mistake is that they don't keep that in mind when they're doing the pitch. You have to look at your sales process. So first we're going to talk about the purpose. The purpose of the pitch, obviously, at the end is to close a deal. But what's the purpose of the pitch as far as the next step? If you look at your sales process and the different stages that your pipeline goes through, if initially you're pitching, you're trying to get somebody on a demo or you're trying to get an RFQ or you're trying to get somebody on something, then that is the main thing that you need to focus on when you're pitching them. You do not need to talk to them about all these different things. You're just trying to move it to the next stage. And too often people are thinking like, well, I'm trying to close them. And, and if the RFQ stage is three stages down and you're trying to get them to that stage on the initial pitch, then that's completely circumventing the different deal stages. And you need to go back to why am I calling this person? Why am I emailing this person? Why am I talking to them in person, doing a cold visit, whatever it is, look to your pipeline stages and say, all right, from here, from you not knowing me, the next step is this. So for in our case, the next step is a discovery call. For some of our clients, it's to book a demo to show off their software or things like that. Maybe if you're in industrial, and your next step in it is that you want to talk about open projects or existing capabilities that they have with their supply chain, or you're trying to take away business from their existing suppliers and you want to be added as a supplier. If that's the next step and you need to gather information for it, that's what you're doing in that initial pitch. So you always have to think about it from the standpoint of what is ideal goal that I want from this situation and not just say the ideal goal is that they become a customer. That's not going to happen in the initial pitch typically, right? So if the ideal goal is I'm on this call, or I'm meeting this person in person, or I'm doing cold visits, the next step is a demo or a discovery call, then everything that you say in that initial pitch needs to be focused around that being the end goal. Does that make sense to everybody? Hopefully it does, because too often I see people just going for, here's everything that I want to talk about. And we'll go into the different types of, of pitches that you have. So the next step is going to be looking at the material. So what material do you guys have that you're using to pitch? If you're doing it in person, do you have a brochure? Do you have a line card? If you're doing it over video, if you're saying like, all right, look, the first step is I want to get them on a demo, do a discovery call, whatever. Then once I'm on that step, I'm going to show them some material. I'm going to show them my website, my brochure, my pitch deck, whatever it is. The next step is you want to show them some material, but too often people have like their material is so lengthy. Like you're doing the show up and throw up method where you're saying, here's everything that I want to show you. I've got a 48 slide deck. I'm going to show you all 48 slides. Each one of those slides on the deck has tons of words on it, a hundred words, 200 words on it. I'm going to read through it. Your material is wasted. You should not be going through all of that stuff on your pitch. You need to keep the attention and the focus on yourself. And you can't do that if whether you're doing this through video conferencing, in person, whatever it is, you can't do that. If you throw something up on the screen and they're just reading it and it's like you're reading what's on the screen. And I always feel like people really want to say like, yeah, dude, I could read that. You're literally reading off of the screen. That is the wrong way to do it. You have to look at it from the standpoint of you're trying to have a conversation. You want their attention on you. And if your material is pulling their attention away from you, then you need to adjust your material. You need to reduce it down. Now, I know that if you work for a bigger company and they're like, dude, this is the pitch deck they gave me. They won't let me edit it, anything like that. That's fine. Okay, if you have to use it first, go to your sales manager and be like, dude, Kyle said our stuff is way too lengthy and we're showing up and throwing up information. If still they're like, dude, I don't care what Kyle says, you still need to show it, then show it and tell these people, look, 
On this slide, there's a lot of information here. I'm not going to cover everything in this presentation. You guys can read this in your spare time. I, there's just two points in here that I really wanted to talk about and pull out those two points and get their attention back on you. You want them paying attention to you. You don't want them getting sleepy reading your pitch decks or, or skipping ahead or printing things out ahead of time. You send them the pitch deck and they've got a copy in front of them. They're going to be skipping ahead and you don't want to be the referee telling them to pay attention. The way to do that is to control it from the standpoint of what do you provide to them. If you provide minimal information to them in a pitch deck and it's mainly them focusing on you and you talking to them, you can send them. They're going to be taking notes about what you say. You can say, hey, look, after this meeting, after this presentation, I will send you a copy of the full pitch deck that reviews the points that we talked about and you can have that to review and keep it in your files, that's perfectly fine. But for the sake of this presentation, I want to basically tell you exactly what I want to show you in this presentation and go through the information that I feel like is 100% relevant to you. Saying something like that is way better than being like, okay, so we started in 1968 and this is how many machines we have or this is what our software could do and all that stuff and just throwing up that information because they're just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, and they, you're gonna lose attention of them. So double check your material, make adjustments, Back when I was giving pitches, when I was in industrial and technical sales, I would throw out most of what was provided to me and just put a couple of words on the screen. One time, one of my pitch decks literally would have no more than three words on each slide. It would be like capabilities. And I would just know what the capabilities are and I'd run through them, but they're paying attention to me and they're taking tons of notes. And it's better to be engaging. That's what you're trying to do. So always cut your material. I guarantee most of you, 90% of the material on your pitch decks, you will not use. So cut it out. Tell them you'll send them a copy of all the information after the presentation. But right now, I want your attention solely focused on me. The next step is going to be fact finding. So you're here to deliver a solution. You are not here to sell a product. You are looking to gather information when you are pitching to people. You're looking to ask questions. 50% of the pitch should be them talking. You talk to anybody here at MFG Tribe on our stuff and any clients that we work with, Kyle always says the same thing. You want the potential customer talking more than you are. In order to do that, you have to ask questions. The key though is that you have to pay attention to the answers. A lot of times people ask questions just until they get a response in their mind and they're not asking questions to actually understand and listen. So you want to go through a fact-finding process. If you could have all of the information in order for you to close this deal in front of you, what would those questions be? What is your current system like? What's your current revenue? Who are you currently working with? What's the biggest issue that you have with this current thing that you're trying to sell against? Whether it is software solution, supply chain solution, logistics solution, whatever it is, ask some questions about what are they currently doing and what issues do they have? For one of our clients, I said, just ask them the question of why did you accept this demo request? Why did you accept this demo request with me? And they will tell you what is it that you said, what is it that they saw that sparked their interest enough to say yes to you requesting a demo? And then continue to ask more questions. If you've got 30 minutes to pitch somebody, I want them talking for 15 of it. You do not need to be filling up the air with your voice. You need to be asking strategic questions, waiting, listening to their response, and then asking follow-up questions based on what it is they respond with. That it's supposed to be a conversation. It is not supposed to be the old school way, traditional way of being show up and throw up. Hey, thanks for taking 20 minutes to meet with me. I'm going to run through our product. I'm going to ask you throughout the, the time that I'm presenting to you, do you have any questions? They're going to say no. You're going to talk some more, ask them, do you have any questions? They're going to say no again. In the end, can you really build a proposal? Can you do an RFQ to it? Can you send them a quote most of the times? You can't because you've lacked that engagement. So go into it. 100% mindset is I want to do fact finding first. And then the key is, is what you actually present to them is based on the fact finding. So you got to be somewhat nimble. I never went into any sales presentation with a plan in mind. I go into it the same way. Hey, look, I'm trying to have a conversation with you. I'm going to ask you some, some relatively standard questions. What are you guys currently doing? What are you looking to do with this solution? What are the issues that you're currently having? And then I'm going to base my responses off of their answers. And if I do need to show them something, then I am going to show them something that's relative to what they said. But if you go into it showing them things that aren't relative, guess what? You're going to lose their attention. Hopefully I haven't lost your attention enough 
and you guys are engaging, going back to the previous point, but hopefully you're still here and listening to this, and that's what the key is. You have to get their attention, get their engagement. Throwing up information, asking them, do you have any questions, is not the way to do it. Fact-finding first, then present to them only things specific to the fact-finding questions. So it's asking them about their supply chain, do they, you know, with their current suppliers, with this type of machinery, with this type of manufacturing service, with this type of software solution, what are the top issues that you guys are having? And they say, you know what? A big issue that we have is we have X, Y, and Z. Perfect. I'm going to show you a little bit later in this presentation about how we can offer a solution to that. People want customized solutions to their problems. They do not want cookie cutter stuff where they just fit within the box, right? They want to make sure that the people on the other side of the table want to make sure that you as a salesperson are going to listen to what they have to say and offer them something specific and build that trust, right? Like all my videos say, you can't close anything without building trust first. In order for you to build trust, you have to ask questions, listen to their responses, offer up a specific solution to those problems that they're having. They're going to think that you're listening to them. They're going to know that you are because you're offering them something customized to it. You're presenting them information that's relevant to their specific situation, and then they're going to start building trust with you. That's the only way to get them to a close is if you're building trust. But you have to first do the fact-finding, ask questions, and wait for the answers, and you need to listen to it. Because too often I hear salespeople, recorded calls, discovery calls, booking demos, whatever it is of our clients, and I'm watching, listening to the interaction I have, and too often... The person on the other end of the phone, the video, whatever, is not done saying their sentence or asking their question completely, and the salesperson is chomping at the bit to give a response, right? You need to wait until there is a pause. There's nothing wrong with awkward pauses. Let the person completely end speaking, pause, count to two seconds, three seconds, and then respond to them. That is the way to have a conversation, not jump back at them and say, yeah, you know what? We do have a solution for that because you don't know what else they're going to say. So you have to pause and put that two to three second gap in between. Let's talk about the different methods of pitching. You've got the phone, you've got in person, you've got through video, the whole, the, everything still applies. If you're on the phone and you want to get them to a demo or a discovery call or something in video, then simply use the phone to do that. You're not going to be able to show them things over the phone unless you say, hey, if you got five minutes right now, jump on the computer, we'll do a meeting link. Maybe sometimes that could happen, but focus on getting them to the in person or something on video. Same thing with in-person and video. You're still going to run the room. You're still going to run the pitch the exact same, regardless of if you're in-person through video or on the phone. But it's just going to matter of, can do you have the tools available? So if you're on the phone, you can't show them something. You're obviously going to adjust your pitch accordingly to get them on a video call to be able to show something to them, present your screen, go face-to-face. -face. But there isn't like, if I'm on the phone, it's this type of pitch, or if I'm in-person, this is the type of pitch. Your pitch is your pitch, right? You go from them not knowing you or your product or solution that you're trying to sell to them knowing you and wanting to purchase it. So moving them to those next stages, going back to the first point that we were talking about, if you're going to move them to the next stage, it doesn't matter if it's in person, on video, or on the phone. It's all the same. The more that you can become proficient in your pitch and say it in the mirror, say it to other people, pitch what it is, handle objections, handle the, the type of response you're going to get, then the more fluent you're going to be in it, you're going to be more confident, and you're not going to stumble and fumble on your words trying to figure out like, oh, what do I say to this? They asked me a question. So it doesn't matter what method you're doing with this. doesn't matter what the situation is. We're not talking about like you've got 60 seconds to pitch me your idea because I'm an investment group. That's completely different. But from 99.9% .9 of the time, it will not matter how your how the method of what you're of how you're pitching to them does not really come into anything that you're going to say or do differently unless it has to do with physically showing them something. The next step. So let's talk about what is the next steps in the pitch. After you always got to be thinking what the next steps are. If you're on the phone, you go into a demo or RFQ or a discovery call, whatever it is. You have to be thinking while I'm in this stage of the pipeline, what is the next stage, and what do I need to be asking that's relevant to move somebody to that next stage. So the last thing you want to do is have a discovery call with somebody, have a demo with somebody, and be like, okay, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with me. You hang up, the, you close out of the meeting, you leave the office or whatever, and you're like, okay, so what's the next step? Well, the next step is I want to send them pricing. Do you have all the information available to send them pricing? Well, no, I don't. I didn't ask them this, 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 and that. I need to get them to fill out this form, whatever it is. You need to, before you close the, that stage of the pipeline, 
be thinking about the next steps and bring that into that conversation and say, look, I want to send you pricing. You can never close anybody if they don't have pricing and you can never close anybody if they don't have a quote in front of them, right? It's physically impossible. They have to sign something, approve something. So since you can't close somebody, you need to create a quote. You need to do a proposal. So if that's the next stage of the pipeline, then you have to bring that in. Look, I want to send you a proposal. I want to get some pricing in front of you. So let me ask you a couple of questions so that way I can properly present this to you. Ask all those fact-finding questions if you haven't already. Hopefully you did in the beginning and all this kind of ties into I'm asking them questions in the initial fact-finding that then funds and feeds my answers and my responses and how I'm going to build out this proposal. Hopefully you've done that. If you haven't, be like, dude, last part of the checklist, do I need something to generate pricing? Ask them those specific questions and say, these are the next steps. If it's okay with you, I would like to send you over a proposal specific to what we just talked about so you could then meet with your team or look at it personally or whatever it is you need to talk about those next steps. Get them to confirm, yes, you know what, that would be great. Or maybe they say, you know what, hold off on that because I need to bring two other people into the conversation. I need to get their input and maybe we might want to change the scope of what solution you guys are providing to me, which is perfectly fine. You need to be one of the fact-finding questions you need to ask. What is your decision-making process, right? If other people need to be involved and other people are need to be involved in the decision, then you need to... Find that out up front so you know what you're working with. And they may say, no, let's hold off on pricing for right now, which is perfectly fine. But you're constantly thinking about, all right, um, before I close out this meeting, before I end this phone call, did I move them to the next stage? Did I ask the questions? Did I gather all the information that I need before I close this out and move on to the next step? So everybody, have a safe and happy Thanksgiving. If you're not currently subscribed to the YouTube channel, go over to YouTube, subscribe to it, turn on notifications so you get notified every video that we post up there. If we're not connected on LinkedIn, send me a connection request, and as long as you're not trying to sell me some shit I don't need, I will accept it. We'll be back live next week, Monday and Wednesday, with our regular scheduled show. Noon Central Standard Time on Monday is Ask Kyle. If you have specific questions that you want asked, send an email over to askkyle.mfgtribe.com. We will cover those then. Any comments that you guys leave in these videos on the replays or on the live posts, we check them out. If you have a topic that you want us to talk about, put them in the comment section, just like happened on YouTube, and we will do an entire show around that specific topic. So without further ado, are we good, Laura? Mm -hmm. So without further ado, that'll close us out. Have a good Thanksgiving, and we will see you on the next one.